All right, this is DAW, or DNW, or DNDO. <laughs> DNDO. Hope you're watching. Um, this is uh, a digital audio workstation uh, made in Sandbox um, using a library that I created, uh, which is called SFXR, uh, which, while isn't a port of SFXR, is very uh, functionally identical to SFXR. Um, this video won't cover SFXR, uh, my sandbox adaptation, uh, but I will make another video on that probably tomorrow or the day after. But this is purely making your own music in sandbox, um, the game, not the engine. So I'm just going to walk you through real quick how it works and uh, how you can get started, make your own stuff. So on the left, this is the instrument rack. You can see all of your current instruments. Uh, which are basically uh, a track, so to speak. And uh, you can add as many as you'd like, uh, and it will scroll uh, once there are enough for it to warrant that. And you can remove them by clicking the minus and then clicking it again to delete it. When you have an instrument, you can click on it to select it. And once an instrument is selected, you'll see the piano roll reveal itself on the right, and you'll see the effect rack uh, on the bottom. The effect rack will start with the instrument always. So this instrument is a simple oscillator. That's the only instrument type. Uh, so it shows up at the beginning. You can scroll along this rack if you end up having a bunch of effects and you might need to do that, uh, just so you know. Um, you can press this button to add an effect. There's not very many effects, but I will get to those in a sec. Uh, these effects are just um, any class that derives from the SFX or effect um, class. So if you were to implement your own effects in the SFXR uh, library, they would just show up here and they would all get their own inspectors made automatically via the properties that you expose. Um, and it all just works. It's very, very, very modular, very awesome. Um, so first, let's just talk about the piano roll. Uh, so you'll see on the left, these are uh, a full octave range, uh, starting from C2. You can click on the notes to play them, or you can press the keys on your keyboard on the A through L row. Uh, and you can press the uh, keys above that row on the keyboard to get your black keys. And um, you can press Z and X to go up or down an octave. Very nice. Uh, if you want to scroll or pan around this view you can use the arrow keys to do so um, you can press right and left to move one beat at a time you can hold control and right and left to travel in groups of 16 at a time and you can press up and down to travel up and down um, and hold control to travel uh, I believe yeah full octave uh, but you can see I'm pressing down here and I can't go any lower or higher then one octave away from my currently selected playing octave. Uh, the reason for this is just so there's less confusion of where am I currently panned versus where am I currently actually playing notes. Um, so the separation means you'll be much more aware of how you're moving uh, in this space. So now let's make something. Uh, I can just click anywhere to play some notes. Um, so let's see if I want to make some like... Something like that, maybe. We'll get like a something like this. And I can uh, use the mouse wheel on a note uh, to increase or decrease its length. So I'm going to do exactly that here to make these notes uh, kind of a bit longer. Just interjecting really quick here to say that you can also change the velocity of notes by holding a right click and dragging up and down. And so you can kind of get it to fade in like this. I can press spacebar at any time to play my sequence. Uh, so maybe I want these notes to be shorter before it plays this next one. Ah, very nice. Now I want to copy this. I don't want to remake this whole set of notes. I'm just going to do it again right here. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and copy these. I can hold the shift key while clicking to drag out a selection set. Um, and what I want to do specifically is drag a selection around um, this area here. 
Uh, and the selection goes up and down infinitely, so you don't need to worry about where your scroll is uh, vertically, but it does matter where you are horizontally. So moving your view will move the selection set. Um, so that being said, the reason why it moves uh, with your view is so I can hold shift here to pick up these notes, come over uh, eight beats, and let go of the shift key, and now I've pasted these notes down. Oh, it doesn't actually, well, I bug fix, we're gonna have to patch this live. It, you can see it just uh, overwrote the length of my notes. So I'll have to fix that bug, but uh, hopefully it doesn't do that by the time you're uh, getting your hands on the DAW and using it for yourself. So if you wanna now get rid of the selection, uh, you can just hold shift and press right click anywhere and it will remove your active selection. Oh, it's, oh, I see what it's doing. It's Releasing shift at all is like with the selection kills all my note lengths. Okay, that bug will be fixed by the time you're seeing this video, hopefully. So pretend that didn't happen. Um, so now let's just uh, make this last part, which I think I said was going to be these notes. Um, let's say I wanted to loop that. Uh, up here on the top right, you can actually see the loot loop start and end point um so let's say i want to loop bars 16 to 32 here uh so it will play from the start and then loop this section uh what i can do is for the start i can enter 16 and for the end enter 32 and when i hit play it will just loop that section for me Very nice, and I can just make that 0, 32, and it will loop this whole section. So now, uh, I'm going to save the project, um, because Sandbox has uh, a lot of funky issues and likes to, you know, be Sandbox sometimes. So I'm just going to save my project, make sure we're, we're uh, doing our due diligence. Uh, in this window, I can actually create multiple folders um, to save into, but I'm just going to save it into the root folder here. Um, tutorial is what I'll call this. And uh, I can hit the new project button, and uh, it's going to delete that. And I'll show you if I press the open project now, I can go to the tutorial and load it in. Excellent. Uh, if you ever get yourself in this situation where... You were just in the middle of playing some notes, but now the notes aren't playing anymore. Uh, this is actually, uh, I believe it's a sound uh, sandbox issue. Uh, I'm going to make a an issue on their report page later today. Just make sure you save your project. Um, and then all you need to do is hold escape to close the game. And then you can just click right back into it. And your audio will work just fine. So if I load back into the project, you'll see. Everything's working again. So let's say I'm really happy with this creation. Um, there's two things I can do before I'm really done with it. I can, one, change the BPM if I think it's a bit too slow. I can make it a bit faster. I, if I think it's a bit too fast, I can make it a bit slower. Um, but I'm personally not really interested in changing the BPM, so I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, but what I am interested in is uh, uploading the project to the DAW-Net. And now what the DAW-Net is, is it's basically um, a web-based service that is built into DAW that allows you to uh, share your projects with others, uh, just straight from the app. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my tutorial project. Well, first let me make sure I've saved it again. Um, I'm going to save it one last time. Then I'm going to come back here and upload that tutorial.json, and I'm going to call this a uh, funny little ditty. I made this while recording the tutorial for DAW. Excellent. And now I'm just going to hit publish and it's going to take a bit and boom, the project has published successfully. So now if I go back to the .NET and I go to browse projects, it'll uh, appear here right in the, in the list. Uh, and in the .NET, you can search by uh, the newest uh, news creations. You can actually search. So if I wanted to search 
for that Megalovania song. Boom, I can find and search that. I can hit the download button, and boom, it is loaded instantly into DAW. So DAWnet is a very powerful um, tool that kind of, or I guess service that works alongside DAW. So if people do end up making cool stuff with this, then they can share it and people can download it right from within uh, the tool. Um, and you don't have to, you know, find the file folder, share your JSON files all sketchily. It's all just right here. It's all baked in. It's all very nice. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. It didn't take me very long to set it up, but it was a nice learning experience. Um, I think that's about everything. That's all there really is to cover on DAW. I guess the only things I just want to close with, uh, if I didn't mention them in the video already, because I've recorded this over a few times and I already forget what I've mentioned, what I haven't. Um, the ADSR envelope is applied after all other effects, despite the order in the chain. If you have, you know, a vibrato, oh, Christmas. So you have a vibrato, it's ha happening actually before the envelope, and what happens is the vibrato is getting applied across this entire envelope shape. Um, so if you think of it as the vibrato is a sine wave, it's like sine waving the whole way along here. So when you reach this sustain time, um, which is right here up at the top because sustain is one, you can see that this is our sustain time. That is what's actually looping when you're holding the key. So that's why right here, it sounds very choppy. So what you want to do to counteract that is increase the length of the sustain. Um, just find what suits you and your sound best. There will still be issues uh, here and there. You got to just really fine tune it, uh, play with whatever you think works best. Um, the, the sound effects are also a little scuffed just in general. Uh, a lot of these aren't, you know, put together the best. Um, but they work. So, um, if, if you want to create more effects for DAW, um, that is an SFXR, uh, based thing. All of these are SFXR components from my SFXR add-on, which I will be releasing shortly after this. So, um, check out that project if you want to see more effect related stuff um and how you can make your own if you would if you would like um yeah i think that's it um for this this little video showcasing daw hopefully you use it hopefully you make some cool stuff hopefully you share some cool stuff and that's it thanks for watching